Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont on today's show. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, a show that's created for authors all over the world, an international organization that supports and promotes authors that are indie authors. In other words, self-published authors. My name is Marianne Fairmouth. I'm gonna be your hostess for tonight. And um, I am also an author uh, published in both the nonfiction and fiction genres. And I have the distinct pleasure tonight to bring to you an author that I have had the great privilege to know for quite a long time. Um, his name is James Rankin. And, and James is a, is a real interesting guy. And I say that with much admiration because I met uh, James at an international uh, organization where uh, the theme of the organization was much like this organization to help others uh, promote themselves, become better. And um, James has written not one, not two, not three, but 14 books. And uh, I don't know of many authors that have written that many, maybe uh, James Patterson or uh, some of the other greats, but um, James is an interesting guy in that he writes in a, in a way that um, the prevailing theme of everything he does is about helping people become better. And um, let me introduce him tonight, James Rankin. James, say hello. Great, thank you very much, Marianne. And it's a pleasure to be with an accomplished writer. Congratulations on your new book too. Thank you, thank you. James, the one thing I, I really have always admired about you is that everything you do and everything you write about is to help people become better. And I know that you've, you've got experience in many different genres. You've got prescriptive nonfiction, which is how to. You've got novels. You've got poetry. You've got mindfulness books about being optimistic. James, how did you get into, into writing about all these different human themes that we all as individuals go through. How did you get started? I know you mentioned your first book was about your, you know, started with your dissertation, but what prompted you to write like this? You know, that's a great question. And one of the things that, that we all have, and, and by the way, I want to thank Alan for all the wonderful work he does uh, for the writers throughout the world. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. But one of the things that we are all grateful for is the fact that somebody took the time to invest in us. So we have a sense of gratitude. And with that sense of gratitude, we channel that into constructive action. And as an author, part of our job is to bring about a book to share with other people. So you're almost reciprocating. You're almost, the, the old cliche of play it forward is really true. So I know you as well as I want to help the human condition because we were helped. That's right. I think that's so true. And I think you know, uh, James, right now with all we've been through, you know, globally with the pandemic, with COVID, but also here, you know, in Texas, just the last week um, with this with this hard freeze. I mean, we had Alaska-like temperatures here. I think people are, are looking for hope. They're looking for, for some kind of healing modality. They're looking for some way to, to, to learn from the experience, to become better from that. And I, I think your books kind of do that. Which one of your books do you think really speaks to that, James? You know, I have had the play. You mentioned 14 books, but what people don't realize is that the books feed on each other. You know, it could just be one big book, but you break it up. And so uh, on that subject, the first book that I wrote on optimism was called The Power of the Creed. And it was a short little book that I wrote because I love the optimist creed. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share it if I, if I may. But sure. this was a this was a saying that we did every week at the civic club and it was promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind to talk health, happiness, and prosperity to every person you meet to make all your friends feel that there is something in them to look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true to think of only the best to work only for the best and to expect only the best to be just as enthusiastic about success of others as you are about your own, to forget the mistakes of the past and press on to greater achievements of the future, to give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others, to be too large for worry, too noble for anger, 
too strong for fear, and too happy to permit the presence of trouble. I love that creed. We said that's a wonderful creed. And I and I always ask the guys, where did this come from? Who wrote it? Nobody knew. So I researched and found out it was Christian Larson, and he's become an imaginary mentor for me. The man was brilliant. He wrote that back in 1910. So I've had a chance to get some of his books, and he's just been a blessing to me. And so once again, I felt like I need to carry that banner for optimism in that sense. So. Well, that's wonderful. So that more or less was a foundation of a lot of what you do, a lot of what you write. And that's, that's wonderful. And I think there's certainly a spiritual component in that. And, um, you know, it's funny today, I, I, was, I saw something on Facebook that I thought was interesting. This lady was talking about, she was 105, and she had come down with COVID, and she had recovered from it. And somebody asked her how she did that. And she said, because of prayer, but also she took nine, she ate nine golden raisins every day and soaked them in gin. <laughs> but the main it. thing was, it was some kind of a practice. And I think what we're finding now is, is with what we've all been through is that these mindfulness practices that I think a lot of your books speak to really do help us become, I mean, I think, you know, with our health. I think it's, it's all interconnected, don't you, James? That our, it's, it's not your health is over here and your mind is over here and your emotions over here. I think, I think what we're finding is that it's kind of all interconnected, don't you think? You want to be holistic, absolutely. But you want to set goals in different areas of your life. So I really believe in that. But let me answer that question. One of the things that I think is very important is for everybody to have a philosophy for their life. A philosophy gives you the guidepost. It's like a lighthouse. It's principles, you live your life, and when you adopt the principle and internalize, it becomes a value in your life. And here's what I wanted to share, because you're a fellow writer, Alan's a writer, so we can all really relate to what I'm saying. Everybody in the world, everyone listening to me right now, strives to be happy, don't they? That's a human goal for every human being. We want to be happy. But I always like to ask people, where does happiness come from? We want to be happy, but happiness is a byproduct. So what you really want to have in your life is joy. Joy is not conditional. I have joy in my heart right now. I mean, I, I believe in paradoxical intention. I could blow this interview wide open, but I still have joy in my heart. You see, happiness is a bright byproduct of an action. So Marianne, what determines our actions? It's the way we think. And what determines the way we think is based on the ideas that we get. So as writers, we want to give you great ideas to live your life by so it can improve. And one thing I believe about optimism, two components, I call it the pillars for your life, life philosophy. First is, is expect the very best, no matter what you do, expect to do well. I did the paradoxical intention as a joke. I came tonight expecting to do a great presentation, to, to put a good face on writers and hopefully inspire you to write a book someday because there are a lot of talented people out there listening, going, I wish I could do it. You can do it. Do it. It's just that simple. It's dedicating yourself to say, I want to do it. So that's the key is ideas. Now, you talked about the freeze we had. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I was living in my house. I have a beach house. I live on an island and it was 34 degrees at the, oh, at the, the freezing point. And I told myself, if it drops two more degrees, I'm no longer a human being. I'm going to be a statue to sit in because <laughs> it was cold. But you are thoughts. And so what I did is I focused on warmth. And as I laid there freezing, I thought of warmth. I thought of a hot bath. I thought of the sun going over my body. And I actually felt warm. So I know the power of the mind. And that's one of the things you want to do. With optimism, you expect the best. And when you don't get it, because by the way, my positive thinking didn't stop the freeze. But what it did, it gave me an opportunity, Marianne, to interpret that event in a positive way. And I told myself, what a great story. Think about the wonderful stories you have for the rest of your life talking about the freeze and that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. And that's where joy comes in because I was like, this is unbelievable. I'm actually brushing my teeth with, with frozen water in a cup. But hey, 
you'll look back and you'll laugh and you say, I did it. I got through it. So that's the key. Welcome well, obstacles. I think, I think that's the points well taken. I think the other beauty that you'll agree with uh, that where we met and originally, and it's very much like this uh, organization of authors marketing guild is that yes, it's about joy. Yes. It's about happiness. But when we have a supportive group, we all can help each other become better. I think that also foster, fosters growth. Don't you? And, and, um, you know, we've got to give our, um, uh, our sponsors here a, a moment to talk about what they do. But, but in one word, in one word, if, if you had to say what your, what your theme for your life is, I mean, you've already talked about joy and, and optimism and all that. One word, what would it be, James? The word I love, and like I said, you, you kind of caught me blindsided here. I would think it'd be empowerment. There's something about empowerment. Empowerment, not only of yourself, but empowerment to others. And I think Alan will appreciate this. Uh, one of the greatest joys I had was influencing two of my very best friends to write books. They never had intentions, but they saw some success I was having. They go, you know, James, you're not any smarter than I am. I can write a book. And I said, absolutely, you can. So they both have written books. And I've got one there in my bookcase, the other one I have in my home. But I'm so proud of the guys to do that. It was John Littlefield and Bill Harris. And well, that's wonderful. Just very that's proud wonderful. of those guys. Well, I think, you know, I think Zig Ziglar says it so beautifully when he says, you know, you can have everything in life you want if you help enough other people get what they want. And I think that's what you're talking about. You know, and I think I think our organization here, Authors Marketing Guild, allows us all as authors and writers to 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 you know have more tools and have the supportive network of people of writers to to become better. So um, I believe that uh, we're going to have to take a break here in, in a little while, in just a minute here. Um, uh, let's go ahead and um, and uh, I think uh, end this session for just a little bit and give our sponsors a chance to to talk about what they do. Thanks, Brian. Hi, I'm Rox Berkey. I write the Enigma series with my co-author. We write as Brakefield and Berkey. Today we have 12 books in this series with The Enigma Threat being the newest release on January the 8th of 2021. It's an exciting book that goes to the next generation and we hope that you'll check it out and all the other books in the Enigma series. Thank you. Lone Star Festival, a Texas size event. Meet authors, artists, and Texas musicians in the city of Seguin on May 29, 2021. Sponsored by Will Seguin, Coffee Shop, Authors Marketing Guild, B4R.Store, and Dear Texas. Produced by Texas Authors Institute of History. Join us if you get your free tickets online at lonestar.book. Marianne Fairmouth is a career consultant with 30 years experience in the national recruiting world, a multi-award winning author in multi-genres, and a speaker that gives presentations to help you succeed. Her book, Revolutionary Recruiting, made the top 20 global list of recruiting books. Find her on Amazon, your favorite bookstore, or at fairmouth.com. Lone Star Festival, where Texas authors, artists, and creatives come together for a Texas size event. Join us on May 29, 2021, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Seguin Coliseum, Seguin, Texas. Free for everyone. Produced by Texas Authors Institute of History. Sponsored by B4R.Store, Authors Marketing Guild, and the City of Seguin. More information at lonestar.bookfestival.network. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont on today's show. Welcome back to the Indie Beacon Show. My name is Mary Ann Fairmont, and I am your hostess for tonight. And uh, this evening, I have the great privilege of uh, interviewing and visiting with James Rankin, uh, an accomplished author. Uh, and, and, a, and a real multi-dimensional professional that does a lot of really neat things and, and, and as this foundation of what he does, everything he does is about helping others become better. And uh, James, we talked about earlier in the first session that, that you've written uh, quite a few books, 14 books, but I just wonder with, with all the different wonderful things you've done and written about, 
what what kinds of words would you give to an author to or to a person who's thinking about writing to um, to to you know to make it happen and also uh, talk a little bit about your your future projects. I appreciate that, Marianne. And once again, I always want to encourage people to capture their thoughts. One of the greatest joys in my life, and yes, I, I've written fourteen books, but. The greatest joy was that very first book. Mary, you know what I'm talking about? Alan, you know what I'm talking about. When you got that box and you couldn't wait and you opened it up and you got it. This was the very first book that I ever wrote. And it was from a dissertation I did. And as you know, a dissertation is about a new methodology, some new technology pertaining to something that has never been done before. And so I thought, hey, this could be cutting edge. I wanted to come up with an idea to train salespeople. And I thought about the theater. I thought about Stanislavski. And so I captured it, went back and, and did some rewrites on it. But this book is still relative to this day. I train our people on it. So education is a good thing. So I encourage people to do that, but I also encourage you to go with your instincts. Everybody has a mission. Everybody has a certain gift. And if you can capture that on paper and promote it, you've got a book that you're, that's going to pay you for the rest of your life. It's truly amazing. Everybody has a story. Take full advantage of it. And I want to encourage you. Just okay. start off. You know, so many people, Marian, think when you write a book, you got to sit down and write a book straight through. No. Writing a book is simply writing a sentence and then another sentence and then a paragraph and then a chapter. And next thing you know, it, it takes a life of its own. And it gives you total fulfillment to say, wow, these are my thoughts. And more importantly, if these thoughts impact the lives of others, wow, that's that is a very rewarding, euphoric experience. Yep, and you know, and and uh, it reminds me of when I when I first met you, when you were, you know, you were in a very um, high position uh, as a, as a as a, a division director, and you had all these different people and all these clubs under you, and you were very encouraging to, to help them. And if they made a mistake, you would you know just that's okay, just keep going, just keep going. So so. What kinds of things are, are you thinking about going forward with, with your writing projects? Have you, have you had anything on the board right now, James? Oh, absolutely. In fact, you know, to me, I have a good friend of mine who actually is a publisher himself. And it's really kind of ironic, but he owns a company that does plays. And so we were friends and I told him, I said, you know, I got a couple of short stories I can adapt this place. He said, well, send me something. I sent him and he put it in. So it's kind of cool to know that somewhere, some high school and, in Seattle, Washington is doing a play that I wrote called Divine Deformity. But so uh, once again, it's you always want to have something going. To me, writing is a muscle. And I was going to share something with you. And I think Alan and you both could relate to this. But so many writers say, I want to write because I don't want to face that biggest fear, which is what? Which is getting writer's block. So I've been waiting for 25 years to get writer's block and it hasn't happened. But <laughs> waiting for it. I even wrote a poem about it. So I'm going to share with you real quick a poem, not the whole thing, but just the bit that I think it hits home. It goes like this. My pen has run dry, yet I will continue to try. Fashioning words to express, searching for wisdom's best. For it's not the ink that the ideas link. Rather, it's the touch of the divine that hones a skill so fine. Oh, I love that. I think we need to frame that. And for our conference in July, we need to give that to all of our people that are going to come to our conference. And, and that's a really cool thing, too, about this um, Authors Marketing Guild that I love is that we have this conference once a year and we have screenwriters there. We have all different kinds of authors there and writers there. We're all exchanging ideas. And um, um, I think it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing. But that poem is great. And it's really interesting that you being a corporate guy, um, right? I don't want to sound like I'm being judgmental here, but it's interesting that uh, a corporate guy that's that's in the trenches like you are in, in the industry that you're in has the ability to write poetry like that. I mean, you must, sounds like we've got two sides of the brain here, the left and the right that are kind of working together, James. <laughs> well, it's ironic you to say that because that's one of the things that you and I spoke about a while back. And that is, that is something that I ran across and it's just a fluke. But at the same time, I think it can help writers. And I think it can help them in a very positive way. And what I'm referring to is this. Everybody says, I can write one book. Everyone's got one book. No, 
everybody's got really two books because this is a book I wrote called The Magic of Method Selling. It teaches people how to sell. And I think it's helped a lot of salespeople, at least the ones I work with, because it revolutionized how they think about selling. Selling is something we do for people, not to people. And just that mindset. So what I did, Marianne, is I did the right brain version. I wrote a story of someone learning the principles. And so it comes to life. I find so many people would rather read a story than read a how-to book. So once again, here's one book, but it's in two books. So I love that. I did the same thing with The Power of the Creed. This was the Optimist Creed I read earlier. So this is a book about that. And then I wrote a book about a young man whose life is destroyed, and he learns the principles from Christian Larson himself. Christian Larson is the mentor in this book. So it comes to life. So once again, think about it. If you've written a book, you have another book. And your books, in fact, why not create a, a character and have them go through and apply all the principles you have in your book, Marianne? Think about it. Well, that's, that's interesting that you said that, because when I was at a, a conference two years ago uh, at the Authors Marketing International Conference in July, um, Alan came up to me and said, you know, we have a short story conference, uh, contest. It's fiction. I said, I've never written fiction before. He said, well, why don't you take one of the characters or one of the case studies in your book and write about it? Mm -hmm. I thought, you know what? I want to try that. So that's exactly what you're saying. So I think, you know, the, the, the ability to, to expand what we're doing, to not just stay, you know, in, in one genre or one area, to be able to expand. I think, I think that's wonderful. And I think that's about growth, too. And, um, you know, I was just thinking as a recruiter, boy, would it be wonderful to have somebody work for you because you want that person to really become the best they can be. And that's every, that's every candidate's dream, James. Yeah. I mean, do you employ these characters, characteristics in your, in your job too? Absolutely. You know, what I always say too, and I, I work for a multimillionaire uh, and he's a good man, uh, but he's given me a lot of opportunities. And, and what I've always told him is that we need to find people smarter and more creative than we are. And so uh, I encourage my staff. Okay. That Can we hold this? Let's, let's wrap this whole this thought about creating better people and take a, a little break for our sponsors to do their thing. Hold that thought. James, you're going to come right back. Thank you. you. Got it. Thank you. Authors Marketing Guild, a membership-owned company where authors can learn how to better market and sell their books. Join us at AuthorsMarketingGuild.com. Factor 7, the newest thriller by author J.D. May will keep you turning the pages with mystery, betrayal, lies, and infidelity. Ripped from the headlines, Factor 7 follows two prominent doctors who uncover a clandestine plot to spread a bioweapon with a 98% mortality rate. Journey with them as they experience a world of murder, power, intrigue, and corruption, where it becomes deadly clear that exposing the truth is just as dangerous as the weapon they seek to expose. Publishing marketing package for authors of $1,500 value, save 40% now, includes a six-piece marketing kit of 250 bookmarks, 250 business cards, 250 postcards, one table banner, one table runner, and 50 download cards, plus book cover design, ebook creation, PDF setups, upload to Ingram Spark, scroll placement, video commercial, and interview on IBS, plus much more. Email bourgeoismedia at look.com for details or bourgeoismedia.com. Hi, I'm Mel Greenberg, author of Running With Our Eyes Closed, book one in the Empty Nested series. To the world, Samantha has the perfect life. Three wonderful children, a loving husband, so she thought, and a life split between Dallas and Italy. When her youngest leaves for college, it all comes crashing down, forcing Samantha to re-examine everything. Over seven days in one of the most romantic countries in the world, Samantha faces the past she thought she'd overcome and begins to redefine her role as a woman, a wife, and a mother. What would you do if you had to put your life on hold to care for a loved one? Well, during COVID, almost all of us have been doing just that. I'm Charlotte Canyon, award-winning author, actress, and speaker. And my book, you have to laugh to keep from crying, shows you how you can revive, thrive, and survive with four golden rules. You have to love one another. You have to respect one another. You have to have patience with one another. And most of all, you've got to forgive one another. I'm Charlotte Canyon, and I approve this message. 
Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont on today's show. Welcome back to Authors Marketing International. We're an organization that supports and promotes authors all over the world. And my name is Marianne Fairmouth. I'm your hostess tonight for this session. And I have the distinct honor and privilege to, to be with James Rankin, a, a very accomplished author. And uh, we've talked about all the different genres and the different books that, that James have written, has written. And uh, the one thing that's really come to mind here that, that's so special to me anyway, being a recruiter, because my job is really helping people grow, is that James writes uh, books to, to really help people become better and become the best version of who they are. So James, right now with everyone dealing with, you know, just this freeze we've had if we're here in Texas, but globally with the pandemic, people really need books like this. People really need books to make them feel happy and better and, and give them hope. Where, where can they find your books, James? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, I'm very fortunate. Amazon uh, does carry the books. And one of the things that we're seeing a lot of, and, and I do have the optimistic manifesto. So if you're looking for something that can hopefully generate that joy in you, this would be something I'd, I'd like you to look at. This book really is the first attempt to take optimism and turn it into a legitimate philosophy. Because as I mentioned earlier, you need a philosophy to live your life by. And this helps you do that. In fact, they even came up with some formulas. Uh, optimism to me is temperament minus negativity plus positive expectancy over positive interpretation times love gives you optimism. And that's something that we need more than ever is love. And, and what we need to say also is love for everything, love for your environment, love for your challenges, love for yourself. You got to respect yourself because love determines your direction in life. And then a love for others. I love what you said about the association, getting people together. It was Abraham Maslow who said, every human being has a longing to belong. Think about that. So you're part of something. So when you're feeling depressed, it's because you've isolated yourself. When you have gratitude, and you asked me that when we first got started, uh, we have gratitude for people who've invested in us. That's why we want to invest in others through our writings, through our speeches, and through our lives. So if you're depressed, ask yourself, what are you giving out? And many times we're focused on ourselves. When you look outside yourself, you find joy. You really do. And these and books, was, we, um, we can, oh, we can was, find these books at, at Amazon.com, James? Yeah, Amazon.com. Uh, also, eBooking is also a great outlet. I recommend people who are looking for eBooks. Uh, if you're looking to write and get an eBook, that is something that uh, I encourage people to do. I think more and more people are looking at eBooks. But I'm kind of old-fashioned. I do like to mark up books and bend them and dog ear them and, and the whole bit because it becomes part of you. So I'm still kind of old-fashioned. But I see millions of people doing the old phones and, and reading. I'll tell you a funny story. I was at a conference, and a guy who spoke before me goes, these people have no interest. They're rude. And I go, why do you say that? He goes, all they did was pay on their phones all the time. And so I walked up, and I happened to look at one of the guys, and they weren't playing on their phones. They're taking notes on their phones. So this guy missed a wonderful opportunity because he didn't see his audience. Do you do audiobooks, um, James? I do. Yes, I have actually two books on audio, but I really haven't promoted it. I need to. Uh, I basically, you know, when I do book signings, I'll have it. So if somebody wants to buy it, but it is unique to see the words come to life um, uh -huh. through the author's words. Yeah. And, and, and during this, this pandemic and uh, these challenging times of last year, has that made you write more? Because I know I have a, a graphic designer that I, I just think is amazing. And he tells me in his 20 years of doing this job, he's never been so busy. He's, so many people are writing books. Did you find yourself writing more during this time? Well, you know, that's a great question. And I'm going to always be brutally honest with you. When you write, you really need to be in a mood. My writing is based on how I feel my inspiration. I like to, I use Emerson's philosophy. Emerson says that you and I are simply instruments. Something works through us, and we are so fortunate to capture it, and that's what we do. But you've got to prepare yourself. When you're going through challenges a lot of times, you're not as creative as you could be. 
uh, I was able to finish a book, yes, and I was able to start some projects. I'm, I started a project on my flight to the Carolinas this past week. I was able to escape the frost and the freeze on Thursday. And as I was sitting on the plane, I just, I always love to write when I'm flying. Well, so James, start, we... Anyway, now I'm going to start a new book called The Optimistic Purpose. Oh. And so I started, right, I wrote like 20 pages on the plane. I said, okay, it's got a life of its own. I'm going to finish it. But I'm going to share one more poem, if I may, about, about challenges. You've only got about a minute. So just a couple lines, if you'd be so kind. Absolutely. Well, here it is. Um, here it is. Pulling my day longer, yet because of you, I'm stronger. You're my daily reminder to others, mindful and kinder. I thank you for coming to me and for all my development to be. This I hope to remember to the very end. Challenge, you are indeed my friend. Oh. Great. Well, you, you are a wonderful friend of Authors Marketing International. We're just delighted to have you for sharing your, your wonderful story. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at our annual conference in Granbury Absolutely. in July. And um, uh, for everyone out there, uh, take a look at Amazon. Um, uh, James Rankin is his name. He has several books there. And uh, if you are a writer or thinking of becoming one or a published author, do check into Authors Marketing International. This organization has been amazing uh, as far as my own personal growth. But more than that, I've been able to, to meet people uh, like James and, and, and others that have helped me even become uh, stronger in my craft. So thank you very much. My name is Mary Ann Fairmouth. This is Authors Marketing International. And we look forward to working with you in the year 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Ann. Great job. Thank you for watching or listening to The Indie Beacon Show, produced by Dion Bourgeois for the Authors Marketing International LLC, copyright 2021. It's over by Dion Bourgeois. If you would like to be a sponsor of the show, please email us at authorsmarketing at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show, please complete the form found on our website at indiebeacon.com. You may also watch previous shows on the website. Music is Solace of Words, created for Indie Beacon.